extent of such uses of the land for housing, business, industry, agricultural, recreation, education, public buildings and grounds, open space and other categories of public and private uses of land is not be appropriate to the municipality. B, includes a statement of the standards of population density and building intensity recommended for the various land use categories covered by the plan. C, identify specific programs and policies that the municipality may use to promote infill or platform development activity and locations where those development patterns should be encouraged. Includes consideration of air quality and access to incident solar energy for all general categories of land use. And E includes policies that address maintaining a broad variety of land uses, including the range of uses existing in the municipality when the plan is adopted, readopted, or amended. So, and, and, and my argument is that, yeah, we need to look at the, the land use element because we need to go back through and as is identified in 9461.051B, we need to include density for all of the areas that we've identified. So if we want to call it forest and find it has to have an identified density associated with that planned area of the forest. So that was one of the reasons that we're revisiting this land use element. Kind of ahead of uh, the um, 2025 general plan. We're talking density of open space, density of buildings, density of trees. So open space, I think, is clear. It's supposed to be open space. But what we have identified as uh, let's see, can we pull up our our current uh, land use? Not future, this one. Uh, Oops, well, the, this the future one. one is actually the current one. Oh, well, the future one isn't the current one? Yeah, that so one. This, okay. this is the adopted 2015 future land use map. Um, there, you'll look at the forest, but it, and then in the text, so you can see areas identified as forest, but in the text, there's nothing that identifies the density so, um, of forest. So with that being said, I think that we kind of missed the intent of uh, statute by not identifying uh, what we want to see in the forest. Well, open space, yeah, that's kind of clear. It's supposed to be open, right? But what, what does it entail to be in the forest? And so that was kind of the, where the discussion started last time. Have you contacted the forest director? Uh, from the forest supervisor? Not, not regarding our general plan now. Is that something that you would like me to do? And, and I think it would be for what thing, maybe to help us. With for what purpose, though? For density? I mean, so they, they it's don't, not currently forest anymore. Right. That portion is, is uh, private now. Right. I think so there's the another section. They, that don't, is. they don't acknowledge zoning. So it's, it's, there's no conversation with them. So right now the Forest Service has been, we're still in town limits for that little, at the bottom on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's open, I mean, it's forest service land. Are you, are you going to point Talk about it, Jeremiah. Yeah, so I, I think the area in question, this area in here actually is forest service. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Forest, this area, obviously, that's, uh, it was taken outside of the forest. Out of the forest service in the lands. Well, that red corner still in the forest. Yeah, and there's no, we're not taking that. Nobody's going to be that we know of. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, I'm assuming you could make that all plan development and even though it's forest service still. Why would you though? In the event that there was a land swap in that area, then then, exactly. that, then it could be utilized in the future because currently it's kind of a hard sell to say, oh, we want to, okay, somebody finally goes through the process, takes 10 years and then they can't develop the land. Because there's in our general plan it says that it's forest and we haven't identified a density in that in that designation. So question then, what are we focusing on right now? We discussed two separate areas. What where are we first where, where are we first focusing on? So that's kind of where we're we're at tonight. It's wherever you guys want to go first, but there's a few items. This keeps coming up with the forest, so we can look at um, it's identified as area one on the maps, and the, the map on the wall is the map that uh, uh, is, is, is up on the computer as well, on the screen, on the video screen, our future land use map. And so it'd be, those two areas be area one and area five that have that forest designation. So I think we probably should start there in those areas. 
identify what we want to see as far as density because we don't have that currently in our general plan, and so we need to clean that up before we move forward, really. Approximately identify how many acres are there? Huh? Approximately how many acres are in each of those sections? I'm not sure. I'd have to look at that. I don't want to give you wrong answers, so I'll have to look into it. And that's not a big area, though, right? Huh? That's not in the floodplain. There is some that's in floodplain but on, that, on Area 5, because that's along the Billy Creek, so I can tell you that, yes, there's some floodplain in that area. And flood as so. well. Now the area, uh, the area identified on the map is one. There's no floodplain in that area. So really, what what we're here for tonight is let's identify what we want to see there in the future. Instead of just you know uh, taking our zoning map and putting it as our future land use map, because it in my opinion, it's not a future land use map if it's just an inventory. So hopefully you guys can see that if, if we just throw what is already existing on there, it's not really, a, it doesn't give us any direction other than we don't want to go, we don't want to change anything. We want it to stay the same. So when somebody from the outside is looking at purchasing a business or different properties and they see that, I mean, it's kind of, it shows that, it, and if they're astute in, in looking at this and studying this, they can see that, hey, this town really doesn't want to change. They don't really want growth because their their planned area is the same as what they've already had zoned. Is there any way to make this into like an overlay of what the, you know what the staff would recommend? Because I think we're going to run into confusion of what exactly pieces we're right. talking about. Because I don't have like I think you sure sure two on my so you're like zone one. Right, it's just, uh, this is the areas so identified. Um, we kind of just threw this together from um, our, our, Catherine threw this together. Yeah, so like, we, we kind of just put it on the map up there, but it's not on here. So um, next time we can, we can make that clear. But really the conversation I want to have tonight is we can so to go through those different areas, area by area, and see what you guys think. And then bring back, bring back the recommendations for tonight, next time, with the recommendations from staff, and then and then have that conversation again. Well, that this is like bottom, maybe part two of three. Let, let's just start with one. Instead of jumping around, because right now I feel like we're going like five, one, three, four, six. So Keith's let, got let me just add one thing because I wasn't here for the first meeting when when we saw uh, the map back in O two, and have we just mentioned that to them. The the O four. Well, the Navajo regional County plan. Did it's on here. General yeah. plan. And so when we saw how Navajo County showed the town of Pine Top Lakeside in their general plan, we recognized there were some great elements in there that should have been in our 2015 land use map. And that's when Jeremiah said we need to bring this back to the Planning and Zoning Commission and then to the Town Council to try to incorporate some of the elements that we saw in that one. And that's the... It's the URS regional plan. And so if, if you look at this document, you'll see that it's actually more forward looking than our 2015 uh, regional, our 2015 land use element. Um, so I don't know why we veered away from this, but this had like a, a forward looking approach as to what we want to see. And so we, this is kind of where we want to just reignite that conversation and say, hey, well, um, in 2004, the county was looking at this at a regional level and saying, these are the things that we've identified. Not, it was, and it wasn't just the county. They hired a consultant and said, these are the best uses of this property. So I think that the ask is to start with this, um, the, the, the regional plan that the county had created in 2004 and kind of use that as a jump off to start the conversation as what we want to see because I, I really think that this is a more forward-looking document even though it was done nine years before our general plan. Thank you. So you didn't want to check that we should have in the plan development. Correct. So <coughs> question on that. What's, so it's hard to me is we, we look at you know our focus on over a tourism area, etc. Rim Road, the entire area, because that facts from road right to the trail. Zone one. Right. So by us trying to make that development, we start taking out like the, the open space, the open rim trail. 
I mean, that place is crazy busy. So the idea would be is if we try to make it develop it, we can completely shut that entire area down to like kind of walking across the rim, looking down across the rim. Right. So the, the problem with that though is that's all actually private property. And uh, so it's it's kind of the, a double-edged question. How do we uh, how do we man best manage that and 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 uh, be a good steward of that property? Yeah. And also at the same time balance uh, the property rights of the owner. <laughs> right. So the, pro pro the property owner can do what they want with it, right? No. I, I mean. Well, it's private property. So if, if you own the property, you, you should be able to develop it. Correct. So we're just trying to figure out if we are zoning it to the allow, allow them to continue doing a whatever it currently is. So it's currently in our current land use element. It's des this is an area that's designated as forest, but there's no des there's no density associated with that. So we okay. kind of just left it open up for interpretation, and that's why I think some members of the public got the interpretation that. Uh, forest equals open space, but that's there is a clear distinction between those yep. as far as statute. So that's why I'm asking, if, if, even if it were to say the same, well, what's the density of forest? Is it open space? Because basically, the, at that point, it's a taking of this person's property rights. What are our options for it to be? Yeah, maybe explain. It's going to fall into the general plan. Maybe explain yeah. the colors a little bit. That might help. Okay. It says like zero to one du slash eight. So that's a, a zero to one dwelling units per acre. Okay. Um, and that would probably fall in line with what in our current zone is our low. And so um, that's some of the, some of that already is holds that zone designation because it came in from the forest. As agricultural, and that was it wasn't actually zoned, but that was the closest thing we had to agricultural is our low, which is one acre minimums. That is the, the light uh, yellow color, and then the medium density one to four dwelling units per acre is uh, orange, the orangish hue, and then we got uh, brown, which is a little more dense, uh, one to one to four dwelling units, and then plan development is five to twenty. And neighborhood commercial is 83, I don't know why it says 83 acres. I think that's the total amount that was shown on this on these plans. But this is I'm looking at the I'm looking at the land use plan from 2004 from URS that identifies those. So um, and they don't they have open space slash recreational, and they also have something uh, shown as US Forest Service, but that just shows that it couldn't have been zoned at the time. But it's not to uh, it doesn't prevent us from being forward-looking and planning it for something. I think that was part of the problem. It wasn't actually planned, it was just shown as forced. So we were acknowledging that it was forced and that we couldn't zone it, but that doesn't... Uh, so when it came out of the forest, it kind of tied our hands to what could be done there. Really. So your high density and plan development is the same, uh, in other words, 5 to 20, right? In our current yeah, land use element, is the high density. Right. So if you're you're referencing our future land use map, the current from 2015. Right. It matches up with that. It's four plus dwelling units. Um, so the see, so it, we also identify some of these same areas and some of the same densities. But then when we get to uh, forest, there's no. We, we took that, it almost looks like we used this document and then transformed it into something else. Because it is close to what is shown, but it, it morphed. So the problem is that there's no density, there's no dwelling units per acre for forest. So basically we're saying, it's open, is it open space then at that point? Or what, what is it? It's open space that was uh, that came out of the forest and so we have no plan for it. That's really what happened. Well, I think there could be a big difference in the development of buildings for businesses in there, the shopping center with restaurants versus putting in 50 or 100 different point of order. Uh, Commissioner yeah, Kenslick and Stewart. You can't cite bar. Okay. Oh, the meeting lost. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Instead of putting 100 different homes or 150 different apartments in there, I mean, that's different than putting in like businesses with the shopping plaza with restaurants and different things. So we're, how do we want to look at what we want that to be? That's what he's asking. So if we just need to dive into one, just the section one, and we 
have starting at the top of the map, are we okay with that yellow section? Are we okay with the salmon orange section? And then we get down to the forest, the green section. And what Jeremiah is saying is we need to assign some type of density to the green section. And what do we want to do on the one? We want the road to be red, which is commercial. And do, you know, I don't know how we differentiate on the map up there because they're not in parcels, but um, you know, how do we want one? So I think we just start with like the yellow, which is low density. And do we change that? Do we keep that the same? And it kind of moves forward. <coughs> So what's covered under plan development is basically uh, if a planned subdivision were to come in. Mountain gate. Mountain gate. Or development. Aspen Meadows is, is an example of a plan development where there's a mix of residential and commercial. They can submit that. It comes to site plan review. If it's approved by the commission, uh, then they can move forward with their submitted site. So it kind of gives them uh, a little bit more of an open palette. And it, it looks like it started from like an overlay zone, but then it became its own zone. So it's one of the more flexible zones um, because it allows for different types of uses and different uh, setbacks if it's approved in the site plan. Yeah, we just started yellow, which is like almost the least restrictive density use, or the most, sorry, the most restrictive, and then it goes to the least because we get down to heavy commercial, so it just kind of falls in the order. Right. Right, so yellow would be just like one, one acre, uh, one acre homes or one acre uh, homes on one acre. What's identified in our zoning code is our low. But we're not looking at changing that yellow and peach color. No, the green it's top. It's already it's already zoned. So the so right. So we're not talking zoning though, but we're we're talking okay. what they are. Just what they are. Right. It would make sense to me that that green section be. Um, Development would be a mixture of yeah, commercial along the highway and subdivisions toward the back. But plan development can also mean putting 100 condominiums that fits in there, sure, no businesses, or putting in businesses and no residential places. We have a slow income housing. That's good. We don't have a lot of that. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know that's what we're, they're kind of asking us, but we're not deciding what the zoning is going to be. Just the idea of what it's going to become, because don't get confused with future land use versus zoning. I think we're smashing right. the two together. Right. It's what it can be. It's what it can be, but the zoning can, you know, change exactly. the, with the color. It's like, it's a, it's right. So we're not plan. we're not changing the zoning here tonight. Right. We're just talking our future land use plan, which kind of is the guiding document when it comes <clears> time <throat> for uh, applications for zoning amendments. Because technically, if it falls outside of what is identified on the general plan, then it can't be recommended because it doesn't marry up with what we identified as our plan. So we can just focus. You just want to focus on the green area in section one. Is that what we? Yeah, we can. Okay, yeah, we can start there. Let's do that. Uh, Commissioner Stewart had a suggestion. If you want to extrapolate on that, um, what you what you what you kind of suggest recommend, Allison. Well, I mean, the area that that encompasses between Lowe's, Home Depot, um, you're coming up Wagon Wheel, there's the fence places, there's Mountain Gate across the street. I mean, it's already a mixture. Right. And it certainly makes sense that along the highway, there's going to want to be more commercial type things. Why restrict it to R1? or R4, or why restricted to anything without hearing some developer's plan? And if it's, if it's just plan development, it's still rather open, right? I would agree with that. Because they're gonna have to get approval anyway. <laughs> right, they still have to get approval. I don't know why we would put in anything else, yeah. frankly. In fact, I would vehemently oppose anything other than plan development. So do the road, do the road frontage commercial, and then do the rest of it plan development. Because commercial gives you more flexibility. Absolutely. Because that's what it, I mean, ultimately. But 
she's saying do nothing. And yeah, I'm saying just really do nothing. Don't even touch it. Well, that's the problem. It has to be something. Right. Well, so like development. It can't be plain development. Right. So what we have, look at what we have on the on the current uh, future <laughs> <laughs> land use map from 2015. And so I agree with with what you're saying, Commissioner Stewart. And uh, I think that what we should show in that area is it along the highway as planned as commercial, and then the rest of it should be a planned development. I agree with that statement. Any other ideas, thoughts, considerations on that? Or so if someone would want to use it all commercial, they can use it all commercial. If they came in with a plan to write both. This is yeah, to be very clear, this isn't the zoning, this isn't what's right. So right. That's the, it's going to be allowed potentially if it passes all the other hurdles. And it would be the land spot, right? Well, this is already it's swapped. It's already swapped. It's already swapped. Okay. It's just designated as forest right now. Right. How many acres? That's why I asked him his number. 300 and in that, in that area, in, in number there's, one, or? There's 120-ish acres that I haven't been sold to anyone that Mr. Coe still holds and then it's right. divided up on. And what is there now? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right. Well, the front the camp price and camp, camp top yeah. Yeah. Camp. Okay. Uh, what they Those are sold. What did they sound? Yeah. Thank you. Um, the Thank camp you. race is the special. Kent Hodge. Kent Hodge special needs. No, 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 I mean the special, like the, the recreation, the special zoning. Yeah. Okay, so it's not commercial now. No, it's commercial recreational. Right, That's that was the commercial recreational that we dealt with uh, earlier. Okay, okay. So did that, that green section from Wagon Road to right. the Maverick Center, we call it? Right, from Wagon Road to Valerie. Oh God, okay. And how much property does Camp Grace have? Mm. 20. 20 acres. About 20 acres. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we should really dive into the acres that's there. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah. You know, but, so, what do, what do we what do we want to do? There's a lot of property there. Then. So, so, just not, so really the idea behind this would be plan development would be allowed to pretty much do what everyone would do with do in there. And if eventually it cuts off to the public and it's no longer like considered like an open space at all, that could be a possible option. Or that already or that already is an option as it is. So that's a reality. Right. That's kind of what the situation currently is because it uh, falls out of forest, and there's there's no clear distinction between what that means and, and open space, unless we designate an open space. Right, and you have to have the uh, permission of the underlying property owner to do that. It's basically taking your right. rights. Right. Okay. Okay. To develop it, you can. It's it's extremely limited. It's not complete taking, but it's extremely limited. And that's off the table because the owners. I said we do yeah. that, put it in plan development, bring it back to us so we can make a recommendation or put it in the future, then you um, general plan. So it's the same as what Alex says. Um, Mr. Ingalls would like to speak on this issue. Please come up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vice Chairman and Council uh, Commissioners. Um, this has been an issue that some of us have watched for quite a while. I have a letter with me that uh, shows a, a meeting occurred back in 2019 by some concerned citizens that were working with both the uh, meeting with the mayor and town manager, at the time as well as the community development director and that day, regarding the importance of planning. So it's good to see this going on now. Um, the couple of things that are a little concerning as I look through here and where the discussion is tonight, part of the general plan administration and implementation does suggest endeavor, there's four items. Item number three, endeavor to promote public interest in an understanding of the general plan and regulation relating to that. The, I'll say, lack of involvement that I feel that the public has as some of these things do move ahead. And the, I'll say at this point, seemingly ignoring number four, which says consult and advise with public officials, 
and agencies, the public utility companies, civic educational professionals, and other organizations and citizens generally with relation to carrying out the general plan. Um, some of you have seen that the record, um, the record of decision on the land exchange talked about the importance of the Mogollon Rim Overlook Trail. Being one that's used that over many years, it's a disappointment to see that basically shut off from the public. And one of the responsibilities that I deal as a citizen when I look at a planning commission and council is to look out in the best interest for the citizens of the community. And as already substantial portions of this 300 acres has gone through uh, rezoning, and there doesn't seem to be any concern that I have heard expressed publicly about trying to keep that trail available to the public. Now, when plan development comes, and maybe you say, look at the Forest Service release this land in the private use based on certain conditions. And we have a document that talks about the importance of the Marion Rim over the trail. Those are the kind of tools that I think somebody needs to be working with to try to create quality development that is good for the citizens of this community, for our quality of life. And so, as you're on this area number one, it's a little frustrating to think that there, at this point, that there doesn't seem to be much consideration of the terms that the Forest Service released that land to a private owner, or an attempt to encourage as that land gets rezoned to try to promote some of the best value based on the general plan and the citizen's input, and it's a citizen's general plan, to try to at least keep that available in there. So as the discussion goes forth, and I realize that um, in my opinion, we need to engage more of the public and interact with you. We have a lot of business representation. We have a lot of folks that, that want growth. I'm not anti-growth, but when I see new things come in, I want to see the benefit for our community instead of just more traffic. Uh, with that said, some of the documents are moving ahead. I'd be glad to make available, and again, having the public more aware of what's going on in these meetings to me would encourage a better product when we're done. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. Can you explain that trail to me? How oh, long you could trail? Trail? How many people use the trail? Uh, I have been out there and visited with people in wheelchairs. Um, I'm aware that some emails have come in that people used to visit this area and bring disabled people here. And now it's locked, locked up to not be accessible. And I think we lose tourism because of that. But over the years, the sunset views from that and the value that was expressed, in my opinion, when the Forest Service let this go through the exchange, was that was a key element to try to preserve. And it's kind of turned over in the record of decision to the town as it develops to properly do that. So who locked, who locked this up? Tim, it's private land. Oh, yeah, that's a bad we, that's that's we, that's we, we, don't, okay. we don't We don't own it. We didn't do the okay. land swap. Okay. Like, and it, it would be beautiful if it was still open. Yes. But, and, and I am kind of, as site plans get presented for the commercial development, how it ties into the highway and all that should be something that this town works with the public entities to minimize the negative impacts instead of saying, oh, it's out of our control. Which which it is, because it's ADOP. It it's 60 is yeah. ADOP. So right, yeah. thank you, thank you for your comments. We appreciate that. But isn't it, just so that I'm clear, I was under the understanding that that rim trail is closed because they're fire-rising that parcel. And they do not want the public wandering around where trees are falling, right? And that's why it's closed now. It's not that it's closed because the landowner wanted to close it to punish someone for something. It's closed because they're working. Am, am I correct? Is that your understanding? Okay. So that's a yes then, because I'm in the same situation that, okay. 
But ultimately, we can't. Exactly. But you're it. presenting it as if he shut that trail down for no one to use because he now owns, owns land and he can't do that. So my question comes kind of this then. What has the town, in town's conversation with the landowner, what are his intentions with the Homeroom Trail? So, you want to answer that? Oh, we're getting right? for you guys. We're we don't want to get too much. I'm already on track with you because that's part of that section though, right? It is part of that it section. It is part of the section, but we're diving. Remember, we need to focus on but the this is what, yeah. the okay. so, citizen. We can touch on this subject. I mean, it touches on it. I'm going to out. Keith uh, Johnson, town manager. I have a lot of conversations with Mr. Cope. Um, just as you said, he they have a state fire, let's see, the, Department, the Arizona Department of Fire, Forestry and Fire Management is conducting the fire wise treatment. The program, it was a grant, and that did, so it's closed. It could, the grant runs until September, so technically it could have been closed until September. I've talked with the head of that, that person that, from that department. Their goal is to get it open again by, or completed by the end of June. The owner has uh, told us that when that project is done, he'll reopen the trail. Wow. Obviously, that if any, you know, which that trail has nothing to do with this discussion in my mind about the future land use of that surrounding property. When a project comes, then that will be part of the site of that. Okay, because the goal is to try to preserve it. Okay. We're in other discussions that I, I can't say right now um, about that trail, but it, it is for the betterment of the community. So that's, does that answer that question? Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. And you're right, it is an important part of our community, but it has nothing to do with just trying to determine what is the future palette. If you're going to paint a picture, that's what we're trying to say is this area could be plan development. We may see other areas that are um, shown as for future uses as also needing to be brought into that type of a dis um, just for the land use planning now, just for the general plan. That's all it is. So the plan, so the intent right now is making that section of plan development. That's like, that makes the most sense then. Yeah, at this moment. Okay. Yeah, Allison is Allison's recommendation is along the road red that matches the other, right? So it's conforming commercial. Uh -huh. And then behind it, just like Mountain Gate on the other side, the plant development. Okay. And, and I'll just say, in, in the record of decision from the Forest Service, when the Forest Service was determining this land swap and getting it approved, they said that the town of Pine Top Hills that has the zoning uh, regulations in place to properly develop that property, okay? Any recommendation beyond that from the Forest Service has no bearing. Mm -hmm. They were asked, will you put restrictions on that property? Mm -hmm. They said no. The town's regulations for zoning will take care of it. And they had, they had full confidence there. And that's what we're doing. Thank, thank you for clarifying. But so he kind of answered this gentleman's question here with the tree. Yes. Uh, Mr. Reformer, would you approach the podium, please? Thanks. Thank, thank you, sir. Allison, you're absolutely right in your talking about the Overlook Trail and the trip and the 340 acres, I believe, that were being thin. In my eyes, part of the problem is uh, I was out there through Camp Grace. Initially, in September and October, the gates were locked. And I think that's fairly accurate. The problem was 340 acres. Someone, whether it was Mr. Code or Gadmeyer, or some other, maybe the city, I don't know, hired the Escondido Fire Department to come out and start do the thinning. There were two crews of four men each to thin 340 acres which is an absolute joke. Uh, how many years it's are they going to spend It's their prerogative, on? Larry. He can spend years firewise. Yeah, he, he could. And to. there's also an agreement between the Forest Department and uh, the purchase in the land slot 
that says that the Overland Trail in perpetuity will be kept accessible. Now I understand the liability issue. We're talking about a quarter, maybe a half acre trail that was cleared initially at the beginning of the Escondida Highway and very accessible to, to get to. And we're still gonna, who knows how many months we're gonna be waiting for this to happen. Okay. And, as and you're good with that? As yes. a group, you're good that the Overlook Trail is closed as long as it takes eight guys or how many people they have out there now. I don't go out there every day to, to keep it open. Yes, I'm okay with that. It's private property. Yeah, it's private property, so you, you okay. can't really and there's an agreement in that something. needs to be enforced. It's that simple. Enforce what? No, there's not. There's, there's not an so agreement great. in the land swap that clearly states that the Overland Trail will be kept open in perpetuity. Nobody seems to care about that. Well, I don't want to say we seem to care about that. Know, it's not that we don't. But they're firewising. No, right? that's the part of the town. That's very expensive. Well, requires property to be firewised, actually. But I'm on your side in the sense of in the in the contract or the agreement, whatever it was, whoever it was. It was with other things in the contract that we can push back on. Like, hey, if it really says in the contract, you have to keep the trail open, whatever, are there things that we can push back on? I understand it's no private property, I understand all that, all that, but are we letting it's in the contract? Oh, well, who cares if it's private property? Are we just enforcing it? Like, that's my question. Is it really, is what he's saying true in the contract? But James, it doesn't matter. We shut down Woodland Park to make it firewise. Right, no, but. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's liability. If you own that property and they're cutting, they're making it firewise, you wouldn't want the public on that. It's small. I, I understand that. You know what I mean? I know. I, I understand what you're saying. But, I, but his point, though, is to the safe sense of if it's half a mile or whatever, whatever it is during that trail to keep it open to the public. We talk about the tourism like it's the lifeline of this entire mountain, which it is. So, like, why aren't we saying, hey, if it's in the contract, Whatever was in the contract, can we push back on it and say, hey, can you focus your efforts along that whole mile now to clean it up? And if you said it already was thinned out for that section, that is. I mean, you look at the Forest Service, when they do their thing, it's open. If they just have their signs out to say, hey, watch where you're walking from. But there's sense. no private individual to be right. held no. responsible. I mean, I'm in the same situation. I'm just saying we're kind of getting down to the weeds. This has nothing to do with your discussion about land. Let's try to focus on the land. And the That's true. Let's focus on the land you said what we're here for tonight. That's all we did. Do we need to make some motion? This is just a discussion item, so it's kind of how far do you guys want to go with this tonight? We, we, we can schedule more multiple meetings for this, so don't expect that we're going to digest all this tonight. Sure, sure. So like on one, at, 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 you know, we're, we're pretty much yeah. in agreement along the road frontage. Commercial makes sense because it conforms with the rest of the road frontage. I'm not saying how many feet, I don't know, but just kind of in general, we think that should be, please stop me if I'm misspeaking. Mis and then the other portion behind, the planned development, will probably be conforming to, I mean, Mountain Gate across the street is planned as well. So that's kind of what we would recommend on the one under the four section. What about number five, since it's a similar issue, let's jump in there. Okay, let's take a look at five. How, how I would say five should be planned development as well. It encompasses four different zonings that surround it, so I mean, planning and development would make the most yeah, sense. Yeah, because potentially it could, it could face a similar issue, not that it is, but it could potentially be the same issue where when it comes out of the forest that we have nothing that says what we we'll want to see there. So, so Jeremiah, can you point exactly what the town, what's in the town on five? I mean, is it, the, where the five is, is actually like six grades, right? Well, the it is, it's, it's the line. line. Yeah, so we, this, this line right here, the thick line, is, is the town boundary, and so, uh, we, we have it currently designated as forest. Okay, so yeah, so it's forest service currently. Uh, Patches Cigarettes National Forest in this area, along Billy Creek, all the way to the area around Safeway, actually. I mean, there's a lot of medium density, a lot of community commercial, and a little bit of high density, and some low density in there. 
Plan development makes the most sense. Plan development is what makes this, makes sense on all. Are you able to like so if you're gonna say hey, let's do plan development on that, are you able then to say hey we want to still keep a specific almost like to, to the point of how far off that is from Billy Creek? Like a buffer to protect Billy Creek? Like a buffer, yeah, because I, mean, I live right off, I live right there, and that tr those trailheads get used nonstop. Right. So again, it's just like so. Usually, what you see and uh, typically it's a little easier to sell for open space in areas that are designated as a floodway or floodplain. Right. Because then we can limit development and keep it as uh, open space that's usable to the public, but also protect the riparian vegetation in the area. Yeah. So it makes sense to look at that for maybe uh, an open space designation. Now, in, um, I don't know that the Forest Service would oppose that because that's pretty much what force is, right. is, is open space, and they don't recognize zoning, so I don't know. We have to have that conversation with them, though, but I don't think that it would impact uh, what we're doing here today. I think that's a good start, though. And that's what I've seen in the past in other uh, municipalities is for um, areas along the riparian vegetation in floodways to be designated as open space, so it protects them in the future. As I well. agree with James that. To keep the, you know, the, the, the waterway down there a little bit. Yeah. But you could also put a restaurant over the creek, I mean, and people could go, and that's why playing Bell makes no sense. I, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, we, we go back to, I mean, where was that sign on that, like, celebrate this, whatever it is, it's like, if you look at, like, I know we live in, like, the forest, but really, in, like, Pine Top Lake, we don't have much forest, we just have, like, Woodland Lake, like, Woodland Park, I mean. So it's like, if we start trying to make that community development, and we just start chopping small pieces out, chop small pieces out of there, there goes, like, your, your in-town forest, for the most sense. I think it's, I think it'd be amazing if you could make it to, like, a little park where you could down up, at some part of Woodland Lake and have Billy Creek flooded around. I mean, that's that kind of development. You, that would be your, and you could have a wide range. You can't do that. James, yeah. let's, let's focus back on Area 5 because you're, you're kind of jumping to 4 where um, Woodland Lake Park track is. No, I'm saying Woodland, Woodland 4 is, that's Woodland, Woodland Park is just like uh, one of the only really open spaces we have in Pine Top Lakeside. So like going back to 5, would you keep that open space and like as much as you possibly can. And then for slippers out there that you want to put in a community development, awesome. Or plan development. Or yeah, plan development. Cool, but like how can you make some of these sections that are huge tourist spots right now kind of keep it that? I mean there's a huge oh my God, Well I do think it's I, I do think it's easier, but then we as we get closer to the Safeway, there's some areas as we discussed last time when you were on the phone, um, that some of those areas are actually private property. So in order to get the private property, it's a little different. They have to sign, they have basically have to say, yeah, I'm okay with this being designated open space. So we have that conversation on, on a uh, basis with the property owners on a one-by-one -on -one basis, going through each one of the properties identified in that area, but it's easier to, to capture that in the area that is currently uh, patched right. Okay. So Allison, when I kind of take a look at this, for me, I think I like the low density, not the whole section, but just that backs the forest. Because you kind of look at the map, a lot of it is low. That just backs the forest. Instead of, you know, for me, I would say somehow we bifurcate that open, you know, the forest in there and actually use low density. And like I said, I don't know how many feet that would be, but my suggestion would be to make the section that backs the forest low density and then have plant development in front of that. Just kind of reducing the impact of the number of houses that are back up to the forest. Then I think that might help a little bit, James, too. If we have some trailheads, there'd be more space to work with. So I'm kind of, I'm leaning towards low density, again, the back of the forest, and then like maybe even on the other side of Billy Creek, make that all planned development. So everything north of Billy Creek, low density. It's not the acres we're talking about. I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll try to ask you the beginning. But there's, there's also. I'll bring those numbers density. for you guys. We've got country pines. No, I there's condos that are going right up against the, the forest there. I know, this is my suggestion. I just like the idea of not high density backing the forest. But if you're playing development, Jeremiah, you guys could have some of each. Low density on the back of it, right? Yeah, so we could, so we could do a low density designation on the back, plan development on the front, open space as a dividing. Yeah. 
between the twenty five. Well, now we go man development with the build this week like we did up there with commercial on the highway with plant development at the back of it, and then this is the old plant development that you do with the low density in the back of it. That's what yeah. So you're on the same page I'm in then? Plant it sounds like it. it. Yeah. Sounds like it. That you so that's my that. suggestion you want to take and I understand Allison's position we just made it all I mean pause Tim. I agree with you, John. I, I think it's a good idea. Because I understand the public's concern about trying to weigh the use a little bit. You know, but I, it's uh, hard to give it even an idea without knowing the acreage. Well, this part we're talking make, about, you know, condos and houses. Well, this part can make a difference too, right? You know, sure. 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 The of the mountain and sure. All those things. I think we should put a little hold on that area until mm -hmm. we get some mm -hmm. fingers mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, right. so, we'll yeah. Discussion. Yeah. Discussion. right. Yeah. So, so I'll bring more numbers for you guys next time. If you seem to be interested in the average, and I don't have that information, so I want to give you the inaccurate yeah. facts. But I think that the, what, what we did tonight is good. Are you guys okay if we move on to another area and, and kind of just take one more area and then call it a night, or how do you want to do it? It's up to you guys. Go for it. Okay, so um, let's talk about area, what is that, seven? On the very bottom right? We, we just talked about that. Was the so yeah. so well, we, we talked about uh, the, the, let me, let me one thing here. Yeah. I just want to make sure for the end of the discussion because I'm trying to get some stuff. I uh, just want to make sure that it's so. Okay, so we, we, we talked about what we want to see in this area. Okay, okay five. So there might be more. Would it just, this whole map up here is five. This one is our next one that we're going to talk about. This is seven. Seven. Oh, okay. All right. I couldn't see where this was. Chad's yeah, kind of hard. Okay, to good. Good. That's good. Okay. Where does where does four and seven stop? If I can be honest. Oh. Is it um, easier to see on this map? Right. Yeah. Look four. right there. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Wait. So seven's maybe, maybe seven's not the right area that we're looking at. Okay. The seven's down seven's here. Here. Five. So maybe it's just that it, it's still five. Yeah, it's still part of four. It's, it, we were missing five. five. Is it probably five here? Or where we want to look at? Because we didn't really talk about the area south of. Down the boulevard. Okay. And when we get to the Eagles Landing, that's the one that was. Okay. Well, so that would be four. That, that's a big okay. section. We might wait until next time on that. Gotcha. But okay, so let, can everybody hear me? Do you think that they're yeah. picking up on the microphone over there? I'll come over there. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's continue the conversation on my then, actually, because let's look at this area down here south of 260. So um, what do we want to see there in the future? This is. What we have over here in the same area, uh, is this the current or the, this is this is the URS document. So it's, mm -hmm. this one's kind of green, it's kind of hard to see, but this one is our current land use. So it's, we'll just stick to this one. What we have here currently, uh, you know, this is the area around Penrod. This is the area that goes, uh, so we have Aspen Meadows that's shown as planned unit development already. And, uh, there has been, there, we have been approached by um, potential buyers in this area that want to expand the uses of the cabins and stuff. So, but currently they can't because it's not zoned for commercial, um, it, it's not commercially zoned so they can't expand that use. So it's basically a legal non-conforming use, we can't tell them to stop but they can't expand it. Now, um, do, we want to, do we want to talk about what we'd like to see there? Is that in your neighborhood, Mr. Ingalls? I, I guess. I mean, I know the master plan of right. the Aspen Meadows uh -huh. on there. Um, uh, when you talk about expanding cabins, are you talking about the mountain top? Uh, the Pine Top, I think it's Pine Top Vista cabins. Or, yeah. At the end of the road by the water right. company? Right. It's for sale right now, and it, it has is. had cabins up there for decades. And right. it's, yeah. there's currently no zoning there? No, there is, but it's not zoned commercially. It's not zoned for uh, lodging. So what they have is what was brought in from the county and they can't expand it. So when people come to look at it, they say, well, uh, I don't know if I want to purchase this because I want to expand it. There's a, there's a, there's a need there, but they, can, they have to go through a very long process to make it viable for them. So that's one of the things we want to talk about tonight. Do we want to see that uh, commercial? Do we want to see that PUD? Or do we want to leave it be? I mean. Uh, but currently, it makes it difficult for outside businesses to come in and say, "Hey, I want to, I want to uh, develop a business here, but I don't want to just keep it as is. I want to make it grow." 
how many acres are there and what's on it? How many pickets? So how, what are we talking, like four or five acres? I think, yeah, I think it was three acres with five cabins. That's what it is. It's tough. It's a, it's a tough area. It's on a steep side hill. Right. It's a cemetery. It's a nice little area, though. I mean, if I was coming up, it'd be, a, a, and that was your first introduction to this area, it kind of didn't imprint on you, really. So we have investors coming in wanting to buy the property and build some more cabins and bring some more revenue into the city. Right. And the problem is I can't let them do is change the zone. Right. And the problem is they can continue that use, but they can't expand it currently unless they go through a zone change. So really the general plan should reflect what we want to see there in the future as, as opposed to an inventory of our, uh, and I'm going to keep harping on this the whole time we do this because this is how I see it as an inventory of what we already have. Do we want to keep it that way or do we want to have a plan development in the future? The property that borders it, what is, is it have acre lots or what is the property that borders it? The property that that borders it, uh, that is adjacent to Barlow, the cemetery, uh, right to the north it is, Aspen Meadows, but it's a little bit further off. Arnold. It's Arlo, generally. Yeah. All, all around is it's Arlo. Yeah. So what's the argument of not, like, not, I know it's a whole bunch of other things that have to happen, but like, what's, what's the negative side of not letting them build? It's what? in the middle of a neighborhood. So it's like, in the neighborhood. Yeah, you're putting commercial in the middle of our low, where there's homes. And uh, so you're going to okay. have, but there's five cabins. But there's cabins but there's there already. Other, but they want more cabins, that's what we're doing. Yeah, so currently it's adjacent to commercial. Yeah, yeah the water company isn't. There's, there's a figure of commercial that extends down Penrod and basically, uh, is adjacent to their properties, but their properties zoned are low. They can't come and say, hey, I want to do a conditional use permit for um, uh, a, a recreational branch or whatever, because they don't have the acreage that's required in our low. They need 10 acres, and they only have three acres. I just make that ask, it's a conditional use of our low. So it's so the issue building more units. Right, so they can tear them down, they can rebuild them, they can't increase the square footage. It's a legal non-conforming use. We can't tell them they have to stop. It's already been utilized as such since before the town was incorporated. So basically, we're limiting the development of the uh, development of future prospective business owners if we say no, we want to keep it legal non-conforming. I think the intent of the general code is to bring stuff out of that legal non-conforming status. That's really one of the, one of the driving factors. That's that's actually spelled out in the general plan. You, you, you might have missed that one, but uh, you didn't touch on it tonight. But it's in there. And I'm sure you've read it too. Do we want 10 or 15 cabins on that same property in a residential area? I'm asking how many cabins did they want to build? And how many are there now? We can't control, there's five. But okay. when they tear them down, we can't control because it's legal non-conforming and they can. Oh, they're going to tear them down. I thought they were going to add more. Yeah, so if they tore them down, they can replace them and have new cabins, but they can't increase. They couldn't, they couldn't have six cabins. Right. They couldn't make them even a hundred square foot bigger than what they are currently. Wow. But we would get that when they came to add them in. If we have a, a use, but since it's legal not conforming. Yeah. And do we want more traffic? I mean, there's going to be five cabins being rented with however many vehicles. And then if we, they increase it to 10, how many more people is that going to make come on? more income for the, for the town. So, so why would that also? If we're turning investors away, it's not going to bring us more business. Well, yeah, we're going to cure. That, that's, like, that's like a double-edged sword, though, when you say that. That's like saying, hey, let's bring in a polluting plant that sucks our water out and destroys our air conservation because we want the funding for the town. But then after a while, our, our aquifer is destroyed or... Like, so that's just a double-edged sword in the sense of we want to make sure we bring companies in so it doesn't matter. I know, I know I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying the double-edged sword in the sense of, you're right, it's like a traffic concern. How many is it gonna be? Is it a problem that it's also planned development, that it it has to be approved? And you don't approve That's 12 approach. cabins. You approve four cabins. That is another approach that we could potentially look at. So can, yeah, can we do that though? I mean, that's what we're here doing tonight. Yeah, if we change it to a plan development, then they have to come back before the town to request putting in bigger cabins or more cabins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that a private road up there? Uh, it is from the end of the cul-de-sac up. It's private. Okay. Right. On there? Yeah. I agree. 
family that built the cabins, I think, did that in the 60s. And it may have sold, gosh, maybe 10 years ago now. And then the whole top of the mountain sold more recently. And I guess that guy's still struggling to do the rock work to get uh, utilities up there to use, I believe, one acre lots with the overlooking the whole meadow. And so how many been, cabins are up there now? Pardon? How many cabins are there? There's I, there's five, I don't know. I'll trust five. what they say. Yeah, five. Five. Maybe five on three acres. It's called, is it called, uh, I think Lock it's called, not Lock the Cetus. Uh, Casitas? Pine Top Vista is that what I believe it's called. Pine Top Vista Cabins. Pete Streamy is the owner still, but it has been for sale, sale for a while, so it's several years. It's, it's almost like, isn't it almost like that gentleman, as you're going down and you pass, uh, uh, the gas station, everything before you get to show, and he's building those cabins up on that peak up there. Yeah. Is it something like that? No. So those are these are dispersed. The road's very steep and cinder, not paved, and the cabins are kind of nestled in the trees up there. Right. And I think that's why they're so desirable for people. They get away from the busyness of the yes. traffic. Yes. So if you make a community development, they have to have to come. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. Plan development. They have to come and provide their planning on. Correct. As you have to submit a site plan, it goes before the commission, and they vote yes or no whether that that, that uh, directed the for the site plan process. Okay. But we have to consider the zoning first. Correct. I suggest we change that to plan development though. Or planned plan development. Yeah. Plan development. Yeah. 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 And then they have to come to us. And I'm not sure, I'll be honest, Mike, how that, I mean, I would plan to go take a look at it. Yeah, so what, I'm, what I plan on doing uh, is bringing back the suggestions that we had tonight and, and creating a new map with an overlay of what you guys have suggested and, and so we can see that and have more conversation at the next meeting and then move into some of the other areas. Are you guys comfortable with that? That, sound, that yeah. sounds good. Unless anyone else has any other suggestions yeah, that I, I accomplished quite a bit tonight. No, that's fine, but I just want to bring up one thing. Uh, you know, selling cabins. Let's say someone wants to come in and buy whatever set of cabins. Why couldn't we, if they want to, I don't know, uh, remodel the cabins or maybe add on or something, is there any way that we can grandfather them in so that that business can be existing? Okay, so in other words, if you have an investment company coming in and buying 25 cabins, they have the property, they want to build five more. Well, that's a different thing. You said remodel okay. building new, that's completely different. I or think adding on is different. Yeah, adding on is different. Remodeling, you right. can get a permanent remodel away. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you can remodel them. When you start out spaces, you get into the legal non conforming. You, you can't, then no longer follows the, the legal non conforming status. So, basically, if you get to come out of that, then you can't even do the original part of it that was legal non conforming. Yeah, because so it all falls out of one, though. And then you have to go back. Default to our little, then it's one acre, mid, one acre lot minimums. That's all you can have is one acre homes. So, so we grade. know, so we know what cabins are are zoned. We know what areas are zoned. Shouldn't we consider changing the zoning on that? So, you know, if it's zoned, we, so we can uh, look at, so we can look at changing the general plan that dictates where we'd like to go in the future, but we're not having the zoning amendment. Yeah, so, okay. so yeah, so we're not changing the zoning. Okay. Like that's the earlier tweak, it's, it's difficult because it's not like we smash the two concepts together. This is, but if the density doesn't allow the general plan, you can't rezone it into something the general plan isn't acceptance of, right? You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. First. That's why it's dangerous to put something as our low now that nothing's going to happen for 20 years. Correct. Could I just ask a question? Absolutely. I believe the commission created a way where a house or a residential lot of a certain size can have a guest house up to a thousand square feet or something. Yeah, so that's in our own shingles, and, and what the code says is that you can have your your uh, primary dwelling unit, and then you can have a an accessory. Basically, it's an accessory dwelling unit. They don't call that in the code. They call it a guest quarters up to. 
uh, 1200 square feet, and that's only in our low. But if it were to do that, in, in this case, that would be um, what, what that would look like for three acres. Um, it would be three, three homes up to any size, and then uh, it could be three more cabins up to 1200 square foot, so that's a different approach. Yeah, even without going through a subdivision or a rezoning, yeah. the property did a minor lot split to take the three acres to have individual, individual, individual and they did add, they could almost double the number of cabins. Well, they had five already, so all they'd be able to do is one more if they, did, they went through that whole process. Except make the one cabins bigger. Right, they can make some, some of those cabins as large as they wanted. And then some would be limited to 1,200 square foot, which I don't even know if those cabins are 1,200 square foot. And just trying to be constructive to right. help out the need to get the sales tax revenue without negatively impacting the surrounding neighbors and making it easier for you to be accommodating the right. business interests that would have just a minimal impact instead of a resort to Right, so if, if they were to proceed with something like that, which is another strategy, but they would only they only come up with one more one more cabin if they wanted to keep the cabins. But as we discussed, they couldn't make three of them bigger though too. So they could have uh, four units in one or whatever they wanted to do. And, and three of those have homes. If we if if they were to the problem is, is that um, they would be homes so they wouldn't be uh, allowed to uh, use those as cabins as lodging. Other, outside of the short-term rentals, which we can't dictate because of the legislation that is occurred at the state level, um, but in our, if we look at it through the context of our zoning code, that's what it would be. Okay, I think we're to a good mm -hmm. stopping point, so let's be adjourned. That was exhausting. That's wrong, that's wrong too. <laughs> 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 <laughs>